Hello, welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to do a little recap on my Craigslist real estate scrapey web scraping project and we used CSS selectors in the first part of the project and I said it would be a interesting challenge to convert those to XPaths XPath selectors which is what I've done here and you will be able to see those and then uh, we look at using the if next page is not none and handling the next page pagination and then we will extract the geo data the longitude and the latitude data uh, and we'll test that in scrapey shell and then add that to the code so if you'd like to see that then uh, keep watching yes so in the last video we were looking at web scraping craigslist dot org using scrapey and uh, we wrote some code which worked and it's got the price date title hood link from the adverts and I set the challenge of rewriting the CSS selectors in XPath format and here is the solution or a solution and I'll just quickly run through it so I've commented out the original code so originally we had response.css now we're using response.xpath so yeah you just change the .css to .xpath and instead of the CSS here p dot result p is the um, is the tag and then you've got the class name so instead you, inside parentheses then you use two forward slashes the p from there and then inside the square brackets you use at class equals and then we keep the result.info which is the name um, so I'll let you read that in your own time so now the next thing to do is once we've understood that and we're happy with that um, is to run it so if you'd like to see that then let's do that shall we um, and there we can see it's made an output 8.csv so let's just open it and have a look at it with open office libre office and um, yeah here we go date hood link miscellaneous I've not used that field uh, price and title so that's all good happy with that um, we're actually only collecting 120 results here though because we're just collecting them from the first page okay so pagination how do we handle that well you may have seen that already in um, some of my previous scrapey videos but what I'll show here is how I've handled it on Craigslist so uh, the usual format is to create a variable here I've called it next underscore page which is uh, something I always do and everybody does in general and what we need to identify is the class of the button and get the href and then that is what we will use as the URL to yield back to Scrapey with using response.follow um, so once we've extracted the URL from the button we say if the next page is not none so we say if the next page exists i.e. if that button with that href exists then we want to follow it with Scrapey and we then call back to the pass list which is this function again or this method rather so how did I actually find that well usual really um, using your browser uh, you'll visually see on the page there should be a next button if you've got more than the number of results which can fit on a page then you will have a next button if you haven't got more than will fit on a page then you won't have a next button and then that's where the uh, the none will come in so here we go next inspect element and you can see a class button next 
and there's the href. And we've put that uh, into a variable and then we pass the variable back to, we yield that back to Scrapey, which then uh, runs through um, all of the extraction again for the next page. And that keeps repeating itself until you get to the last page where there is not a next button. So yeah, hope that's uh, cleared that up. Very, very similar three lines of code you will use pretty much everywhere on any scrapey projects where you have more than one page of results, whether it's books to scrape.com, quotes to scrape, or any other website. Just find the next button, find the code for it, get the href, and then you pass the href as a variable into yieldresponse.follow. I hope that's cleared that up. Uh, any questions, drop me a line in the comments. Okay, so how do we actually extract the longitude and latitude coordinates from the meta uh, source in the detail page of Craigslist. Well, what we do is we first, as you will see, I've used, um, just copy that, we'll come back to that. Um, I've just done a fetch on the actual um, page itself. So we did a fetch on newyork.craigslist.org, blah, 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 and then the unique link of the property listing. So we did a fetch, we got a 200 response, which is what we want. And then to use an XPath to selector to actually um, <laughs> To get the content, then we used this. No, we didn't. What did we use? Ah, we've got space there. Apologies, that's what happens when you copy and paste, isn't it? Anyway, response.xpath. Um, then we had the meta, which is the name of the tag. Then that's the name of the, um, what is it the name of? It's the name of, the tag and it's geo position and then to get the content this bit we then did forward slash at content so you need to use the at symbol there because it's an identifier so uh, when we run that there we go we have okay so with a simple bit of uh, split We've uh, enabled, that's enabled us to split at the, uh, what's that, semicolon? I don't even know what that's called. The colon with the comma underneath. Um, so we've gone to the first part of the list, which is now split into two. So we have the longitude, which is 40.82, blah, blah, blah. And then we've got the latitude. So we can now assign those to variables which we can then store in our using item loader and I'm going to next add those uh, the longitude and latitude add those to the CSV file and then we can proceed to complete the code